Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. No matter where you choose to live your life these days, there's always compromises to be made, pluses and minuses, if you will. I lived in Los Angeles for a long time, and when I moved back to Buffalo, I remember putting some small 8x10 pictures on the fireplace mantel, and then thinking, wow, that's a dangerous place to have those. What if an earthquake? And then I caught myself. Well, I guess not. If you live in Florida, maybe it might be you have to worry about the name of the earthquake or the hurricane that's going to destroy your house next year. Um, maybe in the Midwest, it's tornadoes. Uh, it seems that every place has drawbacks. Buffalo, uh, there's a little snow here and there, just so you know that Mother Nature still takes charge every once in a while. But really, if you live in western New York, what's the biggest hazard? Well, some people might say it's Hurricane Andrew. Cuomo, that is. Yes, sports fans here in New York State, it's our fearless leader, coming to you straight out of Pottsylvania, courtesy of Boris and Natasha, complete with a green light laws, the red flag laws, the appealing license plate fees, a whole rainbow of problems, just to go along with the more boring complaints like high taxes and over-regulation, maybe some backroom political graft. You know, I might be going out of a limb here, but I'd say that more people have left New York State because of the way it's run than have ever left Florida because of hurricanes or California because of earthquakes. Well, despite all the complaints, despite all the problems, despite living with the dictates of New York City voters every election, Buffalo, Western New York, still has a lot of positive things going for it. That's why so many of us have come back here to live. It's a great place, great people, a lot of fun things to do, terrific quality of life. No traffic jams, great restaurants, theater, boating, skiing. We all know it. My guest today on The Big Picture is doing his part to try and make up for some of those minuses that we mentioned, those laws and regulations. Erie County Clerk Mickey Kearns has instituted a lot of policy in the clerk's office to make things just a little easier to register your car or deal with a pistol permit, uh, maybe do property transfers, all the things that otherwise might add to the headaches of living in New York. So welcome to the big picture once again, County Clerk, Mickey Kearns. Thanks, Phil. I'll tell you, I love Western New York. I love the Four Seasons. I love the people. I love all those things that you, uh, you talked about. And that's what makes uh, Western New York a great. I really think uh, the premier people, people know you. Uh, they meet you once and you feel like you know each other, more Midwestern. So yes, we're doing our best, uh, as, as you know, the governor, uh, with many of the different things, the unfunded mandates that come from Albany. Uh, we're doing our best to survive here and to, to actually thrive, uh, but it's not easy. It, you know, there's a lot of stuff to deal with, and you know, you get by, there's, there's, like I said before, every place you go, there's pluses and minuses. You know, it, and dealing in New York State is not easy. You, you have to, you know, you have to kind of grin and bear it. You know, there's things that you have to deal with and, and, and taxes and, and regulations, fees. And one of the fees that uh, is coming up has got to do with appealing license plates. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, there's no end to this. But let's, let's start out with the, uh, the, the green uh, light lawsuit that you filed. Mm -hmm. Now this is the, 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 the bill that, that passed New York State Legislature mm -hmm. that is going to allow illegal aliens mm -hmm. to have licenses, driver's licenses mm -hmm. in New York State. Now you have kind of caused a stir, not just here in Western New York and in New York State, but nationally people are mm -hmm. picking up on this. You filed a suit against the state to say that this is really unconstitutional and if you were to obey this law, you would be in violation of federal law. Is that, is that pretty much the... That's abs absolutely correct. As a former legislator, um, it was amazing. Uh, it was unconscionable when I actually saw that they actually voted to give driver's licenses to people who are here illegally. As the Erie County Clerk, I act as an agent of the state 
And I'm in the untenable position, uh, the constitutional position that if I grant uh, driver's licenses to illegals, uh, I could be harboring, shielding, uh, violating federal law. I could be arrested. Uh, consequently, and conversely, on the other side, uh, the governor has the power to remove me under state law. It hasn't been done, but um, only once, but it could happen. So I'm in that untenable position of what to do. I'm in conflict. So we went to the court, we filed the lawsuit, uh, Kearns versus Cuomo, I'm suing the governor. I'm suing the attorney general. I'm suing poor Mark Schroeder, who is now our commissioner, uh, local South Buffalo guy, good guy. And uh, the reason why we're doing that, uh, Phil, is because it's wrong. One, uh, I do believe it's unconstitutional because it puts me in conflict. Number two, as the clerk, uh, I am in charge of uh, many duties besides the Auto Bureau. However, uh, people register to vote at the Auto Bureau, and there is a front-facing uh, device, and whether people do it consciously or unconsciously, uh, they will be registered to vote. I mean, there's no two ways about it. If they answer the question yes on the kiosk, uh, they will then receive a card and they will be registered to vote. So, you know, to me, this is all about uh, the law, upholding the law. And, you know, we talked about our, our children being at Canisius College and you try to teach them about democracy. And they talk about it at the national level about the Russians interfering. We can have many different countries. There's 195 countries, uh, 195 passports that I would have to accept under the green light law. And when it comes down to it, it's very simply. Under the Real ID Act of 2005, if you were to come in, you would have to present a social security card, proper documentation. Uh, someone who is here illegally uh, will not uh, present any documentation besides a foreign passport. Our staff does not have the expertise. We've met with ICE. We've discussed this matter with them. Uh, this is a very serious national issue that we're facing. And as you said, we have other states, other attorney generals that are weighing in on the lawsuit that was filed in Western uh, District Court. And we're hopeful, uh, we've asked for a injunction, a temporary injunction to say stop, because the law would go into effect on December 14th until <clears throat> these questions, uh, many beyond the constitutionality, are resolved. Let's stop, take a deep breath, because the legislature and the governor, by signing this bill, has put New York State in a very, very untenable position. What's the prospect for getting that stay? And if it does come, will it come at the last minute, or do you think you'll have so some we, time? We go to court on October 23rd. Uh, we're before Judge Wolford, uh, Western District Court, and we'll make our arguments. You know, our arguments have always been the same. It's always about constitutionality. Unfortunately, on the other side, uh, the first thing they say if you challenge something that's a New York City law, the green light law, is you're a racist. I'm not a racist. I went to a Jesuit school. I went to a Franciscan high school. I had the Sisters of Mercy teach me. Uh, we all want to treat others equally. Love your neighbor as yourself. However, uh, unfortunately, we have to abide by the law. When people come into the clerk's office and they don't pay their child support, we revoke their license. If you have a traffic and violation infraction, we revoke your license. Uh, there, we are a nation of laws, and that's why it's garnered interest because uh, I am the first elected official in the United States to challenge this law. You, you know, that, that racist phrase gets, gets thrown out very, very commonly today, and, and it, almost to the point where um, I think a lot of the people who hear it so often tend to kind of zone out when they hear it because mm -hmm. it's, it's losing its meaning, which is really a disservice to the people who are actual victims of racism. I mean, it, it, it really is, is sad to see something like that overused, you know, just to be an argument. You know, if, if, if there's a genuine concern about racism, mm -hmm. then fine, bring it. But if, if, it's not, if it's just to win an argument, it's just to make a political point, it, it just seems like such a, a, a disservice to the, to, the, to the community to be throwing terms like that out because it's a serious thing. We have changed as a country. After September 11th, we all know that whether it's privacy and there are rights within this bill that we don't have. Uh, one of them is the commissioner 
uh, of uh, the Auto Bureau, the DMV commissioner, uh, anytime any <coughs> federal agency inquires about someone who is here illegally, uh, we as state taxpayers have to pay for them to be notified on three-day notice. Now, if you're in a car accident and law enforcement wants to look at your background or wants to look at your plate, we always cooperate with law enforcement. That's what you do. But someone who is here illegally uh, will have that opportunity to have that extra protection. And that's what the green light law is. It, it's really uh, a culmination, Phil, of uh, the left taking over Albany. We all know that uh, the governor uh, made many different promises to many different people. But we're not like that in upstate New York. Uh, many people are law abiding. We talk about Midwestern people. Uh, when I talk to ICE, there's concern because when you talk about fraudulent IDs, it all goes back to a license uh, was something people would use to drive. Mm -hmm. Today it's identification. Right. After 9-11, after the Real ID Act, yeah. you come in, there's a reason why you have an enhanced driver's yeah. license. You will not be able to get on a plane, go into a federal building or go into Canada without either a passport or enhanced driver's license. That's smart. We have a national database now. So this is what's going on. It's the evolving of the driver's license and what the state and many of the people who are uh, proposing this is saying, well, no, many people need a driver's license. They're here uh, to get to and from work. Well, it's against federal law today to hire someone without a social security card. The Immigration Reform and Control Act states that from 1986. So uh, there is conflict, and the federal government's always been in charge of immigration, and the states uh, are, I think, in my mind, preempting uh, the federal law. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of uh, parts to this to this equation, and you know, when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the motivation behind this 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 law, uh, some of the consequences. If it goes through, will it benefit people? Will it be a detriment? Um, I've got a very interesting piece of video that I want to show, and mm -hmm. and we'll talk about some of the things that uh, that'll that'll crop up because of this. Stay tuned because it's going to be a very interesting conversation and we have a lot of other things to talk about with the clerk's office. We'll be right back after this.